Rebel Emergency originally was me, Adam, and Neil, and uh, we just started playing songs in Adam's basement, and uh, I kind of started singing by default because those guys were horrible singers, so I just said I'll sing. I knew Jeff kind of from high school. He's, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say he's a bit of a nerd. <laughs> I knew he was a good guitar player, so I invited him over to play. He was way better than us. We were we were pretty bad. <laughs> school at a music school and Evan was studying drums there and he brought Evan so that was rebel emergency from there we just started playing around Toronto we're doing all right playing at some cool venues and we're doing well and then um, we went down to New York on an invitation to record we met up with panic I got a call from a friend, a friend of my brother, who is actually Adam's sister. She asked me, she said, oh, my brother is in a band and they want to record a demo. And I was like, no problems, I've never done live music before. And, you know, I've never tried micing drums and recording live guitar amps and stuff, but I'll give it a shot, you know. The guys, um, Rebel Emergency, they drove to New York City. Uh, they brought their equipment and we just set out to do some work. <laughs> Through the whole time we lay the drums, we lay the guitar, and we lay the bass. I didn't hear Roddy sing. For the, for the three days that we were doing this, I didn't hear Roddy sing at all. And all I know that somebody said, that's, that's a singer, that's a singer, that's a singer, but I never heard the guy sing. It was his time to, to shine now, and he went in the booth, and, and I remember it was a song called Helium. I press record on From the start to the finish, the guy just sang the whole entire song, like, right, right. I couldn't want it any better than he did it, and I'm like, damn. And I was like, yo, these... The, this guy's got his thing together, he's got an amazing sound. It's not just a good voice, but the sound of his voice is, is really something that people grab and hold on to and love, you know? So I was like, I did like their work ethic and I saw that they wanted what I wanted. I love them ethic and we just became friends over the, the four days that we was recording and we just became good friends and have a lot of laughs and stuff. How many can he do? How many can he do? All right, let's go, let's go for another one. He's got another one. <laughs> Air on the neck. Pull her on the neck. <laughs> we kind of went down there hoping to record this awesome rock demo. And by the end of five days, we were a pop reggae band. <laughs> well, the, the startings of it anyway. Rebel emergency. All right. And then on the last night, he threw out this dance hall beat. I said, Jeff. I got this drum and bass, listen to this, and I, and I press it. What time is it up? It's 5, uh, 20 in the morning. We just started playing out, playing out of the MPC, and he was listening, he's like, yo, that's, that's, I like that drum and bass. And we uh, started kind of jamming on it. I said, can you play like a melody or something on it? With us? So he started playing a melody on it, and we were just jamming. We just Got the melody, I would have started singing. Oh no, how you do it, man? And right there, a song was done, you know. We, we, I said, you know what? Let's not keep this vibe like in our heads. Let's get it done. I never heard of seeing Tony Panic creating the next dance hall hit. So we made this song with Panic on the last night. Stayed up all night and uh, turned into I Wanna Know, which was the first song we did together. People would come in the studio, you know, a lot of people, Commissioner Gordon. Commissioner originally worked with John, at John Shop where we did our first demo with Panic. He went over there and did some mixing for them, and he really liked Panic from the start as an artist. I played the song for Commissioner, and Commissioner's like, Panic? 
I love that song, man. That song is great, man. It would be great if you guys could be like a band together. I don't think it was a fabricated move or something. It just felt natural. We had this vibe with Panic and this kind of musical uh, cohesion with them right away. They went to Canada and they were away for like maybe three, four days. So I just called them up to say, yo, what's up, you know what I mean, you know, because it was a good vibe. Actually, I spoke to Adam. He was like, I think we should do a couple more songs, you know, make a demo or something. And I'm like, yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. So we just decided it would be cool to try to do a whole album with them, see what we could come up with something new. So I'm like, you know, why not? Yeah, we all just quit our jobs, moved to New York. <laughs> Neil just quit his job. Did you just quit your job? Just right now. I moved to a crap shit apartment in Brooklyn. Well, what'd you quit it for? For the band. There was like uh, Puerto Rican gangs. That's like the first apartment where we kind of started hanging out and um, writing songs together. Like we were sleeping on a box. Some people had the mattress, some people had the box ring. So like it was horrible. But like all we had, all we could do was play music. Really, we did one song to get and work out. But are we gonna get songs that sound like this song? Are we gonna create things that's as jiggy as this song? Are we gonna be this creative again? Was this like a one-time thing? We wrote most of the album in Brooklyn and the Bronx. We did it with Commissioner Gordon, who worked with Lauren Hill and Carlos Santana. We walked into his house and he had Grammys on the wall, and we we're just like, wow. We're gonna do some practice Grammy. Uh acceptances. So, Jeff, you ready? Yeah. Jeff Willingham. <laughs> you did it, man. You won. Adam Lee. Oh, one sec. <laughs> Yo, what up? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, I'll be right there. Okay. Man. Thanks, man. <laughs> Coming from Adam's basement where there was like styrofoam um, insulation in the wall and then seeing Grammys on the wall, that's a big improvement from insulation. Coming told us, he said, um, you know what, you guys should like us day back for two, three days, getting a mind together, try to come up with at least one song and then come back in the studio and let's see where it go from there. I think we were feeling pressured so we just stayed up all night, Jeff was strumming the guitar and we just there and just there, 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 there. I called Kamish the next day, I'm like, Kamish, you know what, I think we got a song now, I think. He's like, alright, come in, let's try to record it. And there comes Walk On By, you know. Don't the place where she walked out. Like it fit like directly in the genre. It's like it, it's like I wanna know part two. So right there and then add our sigh of relief. I was like, it's not just a one-time thing, we can actually do this. The name of the album is captured by a vision. I think Evan came up with that name. Ev just went into this whole deep lecture. I mean conversation about captured by InVision. I'm there and I'm like, you know what F? I think I found the name of our album in the long conversation. He said, what is the name of my, what's the name of the album? And I said, captured by a vision. That's a good name for an album, captured by a vision. And I was just like, I didn't say that, but all right. Like, <laughs> like nice one, Evan. I like that. When I said it, I didn't just say it because he said captured by InVision. It's just that it just hit me. I think there was this vision from the start of what it could be. From the first time we did I Wanna Know, like, wow, we could really, like, do some cool, some cool stuff with this. Like, I was captured by a vision because this was a vision that I was having that we could actually do this. Because there was something different. We're like, is this going to work, you know? Like, we're a rock band and this guy's, like, dance hall. This is a vision. It's not like, it has been done before. It's not like we set out to make a rock album or we set out to make a reggae album or we set out to do something completely new, something that not even we knew what we were doing. So it's really a vision. And Roddy wrote it because Rod had a book and he wrote that at the front of the book, captured by a vision and said, Panic, we're not going to change this name. This is going to be the name of the album. Adam, he plays uh, rhythm guitar. Adam is a major part of 
us getting our music into people's ears. On top of that, he comes up with some cool guitar parts that maybe no one else in the band would. Adam is, he's hilarious, you know? You don't need anything else on the road but Rod and Adam, one, two punch. Oh yeah, I just had sex with Playboy model. She's in the band over there. No, no, don't look, it's okay. Just take my word for it. It was pretty good. She, uh, you know, she told me to stop because it was, it was lasting way too long. But hey, that's what happens when you're the perfect man, right? Neil Yagabuchi. Yagabuchi, the bass master, as they call him. Fun guy, man. Like, laid back, easy going, no problem kind of guy. Funny, funny guy. <laughs> Neil is definitely one of my favorite people. Not just because he's my, my bass player, but as a friend. And he is definitely one of my favorite people. Remember the best I felt in Jamaica. Oh, that's right. Cool. First time I've ever felt it's cool in Jamaica. Jeff. Jeff's awesome. There's tons of guitar players, but he's a you know, good one. He's a very, very good one. Jeff visually bridges the rock reggae um, melding because he's a white person with dreadlocks, which is traditionally a Jamaican uh, hairstyle. He can take a good idea and make it great. Like I could just sing to him all, sing to him a melody and he'll make it twice as good as, as what I had. Great guitar player and great guy. Oh, this is two, three. <laughs> Evan, the animal Ferguson. <laughs> AKA John Boss. He brings kind of a different energy, I guess. He grew up in Halifax, and most, pe most people from Halifax are weird fishermen. <laughs> but amazing, amazing, amazing gentleman, amazing guy. I'm just kidding, I love Halifax people. Panic, without him, obviously the album wouldn't be anything like it, like it is. It's rock reggae, so without him, we'd just be a rock band one of a million rock bands in Canada and the US. He's just a ball of energy. He's really passionate about music and you can see that when he plays. Even in practice, he's the same as he is on stage. He has this contagious uh, energy that we all pick up on. We'll look at him and he's having a great time, so you can't help but follow that. Water me make run out of her eyes When me push it way up inside Next year she see me she a run and go hide Panica expert and no nothing me a try Me say me make beat like grab me and slide When I'm between the girls them tie Not true me simple and me go like me shy When this thing a rise it a reach me This body is mine Rod Coleman, a.k.a. Roddy Soul My partner in crime it just make me feel confident because I know that I'm gonna go out there and the minute these people hear his voice, they're gonna be like, yes, Rod is really, really special, a special one. It's not just a, a singer, cause there's singers all over the place, but the sound that Roddy gets, the sound is, it's, I think it's unique. It's a very, very unique sound and I'm like, Rod is all the biggest fan. Man. Operation Panic and the Rebel Emergency takes over Jamaica. Jamaica, Jamaica. See, I love Jamaica. I just love Jamaica. Love Jamaica. For Sumfest 2005, we're the headliners. <laughs> they put us on first. It's a reverse headliner. Can we welcome, please, all the way from Canada to kick off Red Stripe Reggae Sumfest International Night 2.
场中的荣光，是有梦的朝阳的落花。We went to Jamaica to play uh, Sumfest. Sumfest is the biggest reggae stage that can be on anywhere because it's home. It's right here in Jamaica. That's where reggae was born, and that's where reggae is most revered, I guess. Like, music is, is life down there. <laughs> These people are tough. I've seen the best of the best of the best in the business come there and have a hard time with these people. If they don't like you, they'll let you know, you know? We were first on stage at Sunfest. We thought we would be like a little bit later down in the lineup. But we were first out there on stage. There was 200 people in lawn chairs there. Right at the front, there's a couple of chairs and a couple of people. And this huge field, so it's ridiculous. But we played, man, and we played hard, and everybody there gave us a good round of applause. Those 200 people who saw us loved us. So. Love you, Sunfest. It was a blessing to play for y'all. No panic in the rebel emergency. That was our Christina Jamaica. That was our first, our first one, and it went well. So for us to be from Canada, playing their music, and them accepting us, that's like a, a huge thing for us. We just like took the momentum and then we had an album release party that was keeping in Kingston now, so. I don't even know where we were, but there was, it, it wasn't by the beach where I thought we'd be. Like this is like in the middle of Kingston and uh, people are getting stabbed outside our, our door. Some guy got macheted, you see guns flashing around and stuff. And it was just totally different experience from what I've known my whole life. Whoa, that guy's got crazy blood on his back. They said after Jupiter. They said China doll. I wanna know. I wanna do yeah, I wanna know. I like that. I like that. They said. They said. Oops. China, China doll. I wanna know. Go say it. Yeah, that's a good end. That's a good set, man. If you do that. Let your mind wander far away. Did we read you guys the set? Yeah, just for sure. Don't want to talk. I don't find it myself. Just walk on by. We're trying to play for the entire country of Jamaica from this single spot. A I just talked to the guy. He said a million watts of sound is here tonight. So it's going to be crazy. You're a liar. You're an idiot. Try to know who's actually there right now! But panic! 